Uh, Valiant versus Mayhem, it took it took me a longer time because there were a couple of things I needed to check as well, uh, from other teams and their stuff, and they played a lot higher level than than than, than even Gladiators versus Boston. So I think at this moment at least, I think Valiant and Mayhem would uh, probably beat uh, Gladiators. So I I'm not gonna change the power level or anything, and and but both I think are convincingly ahead of Gladiators, if, including Mayhem. Even though it was like a three one score line for the Valiant and Mayhem, I I think Mayhem is still a strong team, and I'll talk a little bit about their play style later. Okay, so wait, where's my castle? Okay, so I talked about double shield being a castle, right? On defense, it is a castle. You have to construct your castle, and you have to, and, and, and that construction is based off many, many different things. It is based off, uh, one, it is based off positioning. Uh, positioning. It's based off knowing exactly where is the Q zone, right? Q, Q zone, all right, Q zone. Which is like, you, you, you want to funnel the enemy within a certain position. And maybe you guys are thinking, what's the difference between a Q zone and like a choke? I mean, you could also use choke, I mean, is every single comm use choke well the difference is q zone sometimes doesn't need to use choke the fact that you have two shells means that you can position yourself in weird angles so the enemy is forced to approach you from a specific angle and then it sets up uh, your, your your team your castle or defense and it makes it very easy for you to break their shell and not very easy for them to break your shell for example so positioning q zone chokes and of course the usage of ultimates so we'll talk about all this and a lot of times uh, in double show you have to be flexible. There are many teams that are not as flexible, and there are good double show teams, but there are also inconsistent double show teams. And the reason why you need to be flexible, especially on attack, is that you cannot use a one size fit all strategy or like a, a single concept or a single theory to to break in. I mean, I, unless there are a couple of general theories on how you want to break into the castle, right? But at the end of the day, you know, if you look at warfare. Right. Uh, no matter which castle you storm, no matter where you go, right, wherever fucking. Okay, wait. Let me just draw this. This is, this is, this is fucking uh, double show on defense. Defense, double show. Orisa Sigma, Orisa Sigma. Right. And this is attack. Wait. You, you know, is, these guys are taking fucking out like twenty angles on the castle, right? And this is attack. So, uh, the, the, the point is that for attacking team, right, you, the general, it has to come up with, like, methods in breaking into the castle. You want to, like, what do you want? You want to catapult? You want to catapult fucking, fucking, I don't even know what this is, like, pieces of lava over the wall? You want to use a tree bouchette? You want to use a battering ram? Like, what, what do you want to do, right? You can see a hole in this wall, a hole in this wall over here. You can see people shooting arrows, trying to pressure the people on high ground, so the people on high ground doesn't pressure the people on the battering ram and stuff, right? You don't, if you don't have archers pressuring the people on high ground, then the archers get to shoot these guys for free. And even though it's kind of hard to kill them, it's, you know, uh, yeah. So you kind of want to disrupt disrupt the high ground, right? People sending in, like, fucking people holding hammers and axes and swords up the... Up the up the fucking up the up the whatever this is called a ram I I don't know what this is called and so you can go in and of course you try to break in the front door as well so the enemy needs to send people to defend the front door and of course the, the more successful you are the more powerful weapons you use and the more angles you take and the more successful each of these endeavors are the more likely you break into the castle right because if 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 this door is half broken you need to always send people to reinforce this door then you know the top of the castle the high ground is always already being 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 fought over and obviously you won't be able to hold high ground strongly which means that you know these guys will have a lot less pressure so it all comes together to break into the castle and this is very very similar to uh, orisa sigma defense very similar so the superior medieval weaponry that is true that is true you tend to lose when ksp locks we do okay i took it took me three hours to to just for village right but uh of course, when it when it comes to stream, I I, I generally takes a, a, a take a really really long time. So I don't I need to explain all this to you. Right, it comes out in words, right? But in my head, it when I look at the fight, it it just it, it just goes in. So this is the teaching part takes longer than the the analyzing part. <laughs> okay, so uh, I don't think we have enough time actually. In fact, I don't even think we have enough time to cover the entirety of Rialto. That's how I how long I think it will take for us. Because even though you can see, I said we'll look at two maps. That is, I don't think that's possible because I, I already went through like uh, one fight in Rialto and in it is way more complicated than like an entire map in some of the other matches. So probably we'll just cover Rialto, maybe just, even just one side of Rialto, uh, time permitting because I, I have something at 12pm as well. So this will be a, at least a two hour stream, but uh, we'll see how, how, how much we can cover in these two hours. Okay, so first thing, Daddy choke me, holding and pushing a choke. So, uh, this Riato has two main chokes, and both chokes can be fought 
over in a variety of fashions. So this choke is really interesting because uh, if you look at this choke, right? If you look at this choke, right? Uh, this choke has many holes. What I mean by holes, right? Across this choke, there is this hole over here. You have this flanking path over here. You have this and you have this. So th even though this is, is a choke, you the game does give you a lot of options, right? And a lot of like... Uh, multi-dimensional flanking route because technically not only do you have a flanking route over here you do have a, a high ground over here the high ground gives you options to move along the the, the the fucking balcony as well and then you have like multiple flanking options and of course you can go like float around the river and all the, go all the way around them so the thing is even though this is a choke there are a lot of options available for the team on defense for the team on offense and the team on defense so there are many ways that mayhem can can can, can play this they could play really aggressively, they could hold over here, they could hold further out, they could hold closer to here, they could have one person on high ground dropping down after, there's a lot of options on attack and defense. So this is why you need to be flexible when you're on attack. You need to see how Mayhem play, the position that they hold, and then position your Sigma and then your DPS accordingly, right? To do maximum uh, influence on the, the, the defended, defensive uh, stronghold that Mayhem has. This is also why when a really good double shield team fights against a really bad double shield team, a lot of the time the map cannot be completed. And the reason for that is because if every single uh, choke is a castle, if every single choke is a castle, and you, you have no idea how to break the castle, and you're not flexible enough to break the castle, yeah? your coach taught you like one method to break into the fucking castle, and the enemy used method two, and you're fucked. You're like fucked entirely because you can't copy the set play. Then you lose. Then you lose. So you do need you do need some flexibility and, and, and some understanding of how like uh, how how double show works, uh, not on the coaching level but on on the players level, so that you can create uh, ways to break it. Otherwise, you just get picked again and again. You're like, what the, what the fuck? Uh, stop dying and then you know it's not really their fault. I mean, I guess it's their fault for getting their head shot or getting five bot to the face. But if you don't have a good enough position. It is very fucking hard to break in. It is very fucking hard to not get picked. So we will see a couple of the times where Mayhem actually made a, make a pick and we will talk about why, how they even get that pick in the first place. So, yeah, we will talk about this choke. We will talk about what happens when they are fighting over this choke. We will talk about, you know, how Valen and Mayhem push and hold this choke. The strengths of, and of course, the strengths of attack. There were strengths and weak. We will talk about how to break into uh, Mayhem's uh, defense. And we will talk about, like, you know, when Valen attempted to break into that defense they made a couple of mistakes and we'll try to identify them okay next page of the slide uh zen got picked off how and why you can see in this in this slide uh in this slide three minute 35 seconds hot usage target with extreme prejudice so we, i want to talk a little bit about hot usage first right so we won't even talk about we'll talk about shells and hot usage but we'll talk about yeah we'll essentially talk about show and hot usage first and look at this zen he's getting rocked in the face so we have to, to to see what happened we obviously have to go back into the fight and take a look at this okay so mayhem sets up on defense they're not even gonna some people actually like to set up like on high ground okay they're actually going to do that they're gonna set up on high ground here and five, four, three, two, one. Let's look. Take a look at. Let's take a look from lateral POV, right? So since we know he's gonna die in what twenty seconds, so let's take a look at lateral POV. So he's just on high ground, bum bum. He gets shot a couple of times, bum bum bum. Right, and this is new break high ground. Quite easy to break high ground. People generally shouldn't be staying on high ground for long. Uh, yeah, I know in rank some people do that, but yeah. So shoot a couple of times and and there we go, and he's dead. So. Uh, first thing first, Zen died here, right? Before Zen died, what was the team doing? What was Valen doing? They, they weren't just moving around for the sake of it, right? They were obviously trying to do something. So, <clears throat> let's take a look at what, what they were doing. So, uh, I think I mentioned this before. Uh, every single map I mentioned for the attacking team has a pivot point for attacking team and for defending team. So, a pivot point, what it means by a pivot point is that if you are an attacking team, you need to control this space to have a chance of winning the defending team. You need to control a certain space to have a chance. If you control it, do you win the fight? No, 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 no. That's step one. That's step one. So, for example, right, if you want to fight an MMA fighter, if you want to fight a world champion at, I don't know, fighting or boxing or anything, and you are like 150 pounds, and that guy is like a 250 pounds, and he's pure muscle, and you are a fat 150 pounds. Let's say, let's say, you're a fat 150 pounds, right? You won't be able to beat him. Because one, not only are you lighter than him, even if you have a ton of muscles at 150 pounds, you're going to lose to the fucker fight, fucking fighter, right? Because it's 250 pounds of muscle and you're 150 pounds of fat. But first, even if you are, you have 150 pounds of muscle, you'll lose to him because he's 100 pounds heavier than you. Second, he knows martial art and you don't. But the first and foremost is still most important. If you are 100 pounds lighter than him, you're not going to beat him. It's, uh, I was in judo, right, in, 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 in college. In university, I was in judo. And essentially, it doesn't matter how much I know how to fight. If the other guy has fucking 50 pounds of me, that's equivalent to like 
two or three belts advantage, right? He's way better than me, even if I'm higher ranked than him and I'm more experienced than him. Because the fucker, the fucker is, has more defense than me. He has more offense than me, and he doesn't even need to know how to fight. So that's why, you know, when you when you when you're smaller, you almost always lose fight, no matter whether you know like martial arts and everything. That's also why uh, people. You know, I mean, this, I, I'm kind of rambling already, but you know, that's also why people, when you learn like Krav Maga, there's specific martial arts that teaches you how to uh, run away, how to kick someone in the uh, kick someone in the kneecap or uh, poke someone in the eye and run away, gouge out someone in the eye. Because essentially, you don't want to go over like techniques on how to re-slock someone or how to put someone to the ground. No, you just want to do as much damage in a very short amount of time and run away, especially if you're smaller than someone. So anyway, in this case, uh. The Jesus, that was actually a really far ramble. It wasn't even it wasn't even relevant to the fucking fight. Okay, anyway, in this case there are two pivot points. Uh, there are pivot po- the, the pivot point for offense, right? The the place where offense need to uh to control before they move over is this area. Give me one second. So have to have to answer a call. Hello, John. <laughs> the, the the funny thing is the government, right? The Singapore government actually calls me a couple of times, uh, a day, like three or four times a day, just to check that I'm in my hotel room, right? And then uh, this, this 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 guy he asked me, "Hey, John, are you are you in the hotel room right now?" And I was like, "Yeah." And then, and actually he called me really early, nine a.m. right? And the reason for that is because yesterday I missed one SMS. So people message the, the the government messages me, and I have to reply in the ma- the message in one within one hour. But the thing is, I'm currently operating in U.S. time, and I, I I sometimes I just take naps in the in the day, like in the in the Singapore day, because obviously I'm tired, and in U.S. time is like a different time altogether. So I'm trying my best to reset my time clock, but. Yeah, so I was actually sleeping when the fucking message came in. So they call me and currently, and they're like, "Oh, were you in the hotel yesterday?" And obviously, I've been in this 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 very expensive prison cell for the last last three days. So there was a, there was a video call, and I had to show them my hotel room. That this is was a hotel room, not a simulation of my bedroom back home converted into a hotel room. So yeah, but I mean, it's it's understandable, and that's I think one of the strengths of Singapore as a government or my country as a government that you know it's very organized and it's very rigid. Sounds like double show actually, but also uh, the uh, election is coming in my country, and I think that's very interesting. Uh, oh Jesus, we are rambling so far away from the topic, but it's actually okay. I'm, this is gonna be fast because I think it's an interesting thing. So my government, right, the establishment, there has been one political party uh, winning in Singapore for the last 50 years and this political party has never lost. We are a democracy. But we are the kind of democracy where the dice are stacked awfully in the the, the establishment favor. Not that it's unfair, but that most of the smartest people go to the best political party. So it's stacked in terms of like the meritocratic way. But anyway, so this is the first election. Uh yeah, but they have never lost before. So take take that however you will. But uh yeah, so rigid is Singapore's strength. We Singapore is essentially a double shield composition. Is we are Singap- we are essentially so dynasty because we are really good at some stuff and not great at some stuff. So anyway, let's continue. Okay. By the way, our Team Singapore budget was blown on John's presidential suite at the Hilton's and feeding Lost and Cup. My asshole dude. I paid for the Singapore team's Uber. Cost me like fucking eight hundred Sing dollar, five hundred US. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Asking for you to please come coach Odyssey. Wait, is Odyssey playing in the in the in the? You guys are playing. Are you guys playing in the, the the community tournament, community cup or something? Cause I'm I'm helping I'm helping the third impact one I think. Cause someone actually was it third impact? Someone messaged me uh, and I I agreed. 
was it third impact or was it friend community comp? I think it was third impact. Third impact, I think. Yeah, I, I'm doing like a short uh, it, for fifteen minutes. So I'll explain like some some fights or some shit. I can't remember. And you go look at the message again. So if you guys are playing that, maybe maybe I'll be talking over your fight, criticizing your fight and your team. <laughs> It's educational for us in the US. Most folks haven't lived outside their home country. I'm a rare exception. Ah, Kojo. Yeah, it is rare. Hey, by the way, nice to see you again, Kojo. The US government is like dollars without decay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> we all paid roughly the same amount then. Yeah, and yeah. I know the community member paid roughly the same amount. The play. Yeah, we paid for the players. They're yeah, playing in T1. Okay, then I'll see you there. Yeah, I'll see you in the stream. You guys are playing at the international. Welcome getting that coaching. No, I'm not coaching anyone. <laughs> okay. So, the pivot point is here. And the pivot point is really, really important. So, one of the very popular ways of like people uh, people you know, playing in this, this map without understanding the whole pivot point is a lot of people play like that. I'll show you guys what I mean. A lot of people play like this. A lot of people play like this. This way. So, they have like maybe a Zen. Uh, I'll slide down. There. They have like maybe a Zen peeking through this fucking hole. Like, hmm, all right, shoot, shoot, shoot. They have a Sigma maybe playing like here. Shoot, shoot, shoot. They have Orisa maybe playing like here. And then the payload moves to here. And then they start they start shooting the shield. They start breaking the shield, right? And then for this enemy team, right, it's actually really dangerous for the enemy Orisa. Because uh, your, your Orisa. Because let's say the Orisa plays over here, right? And at some point, now he needs to push past this choke. And if this team is really, really good, like really, really good. What's gonna happen is as he push past this choke, his choke is gonna break and he's gonna fortify. And as he walks back, his fortify ends, he's gonna get halted back and he's gonna die. At the same time, Bob, this guy here, uh this guy here, a uh, BQB, sorry, Bob, fucking hell. BQB, he, he will position somewhere more aggressive, maybe here or here, and he'll just keep shooting dynamite again and again. So whichever tanks try to push this corner, it's gonna be really hard for them. And it's possible if you have an ultimate, and that's also that's also why in rank, right? A lot of times you need an ultimate to push past this corner at six. And 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 and, and generally, you know, in rank, most people just hold here, most people just push here, and the attacking team gets an ultimate push and wins and blah blah blah. blah. In in this case, however, right, it's uh it, Mayhem's gonna try their their hardest to make sure that Valiant uh, doesn't get this without an ultimate, uh, doesn't get this without anything. Also, you must remember that Valiant is playing a Widow, right? KSP is playing a Widow. He's not playing a fucking uh, uh, Ash, he's playing a Widow, which means that they don't have a bot, they don't have an ultimate that allows them to, they, they have one less aggressive ultimate, because Warhack isn't really an ultimate, it's a, it's a utility ultimate. It helps the team know where all the enemy players are, and it helps the Widow get easier shots, uh, easier chance of him getting a pick. But it, technically, it doesn't actually, uh, it isn't as offensive, right? Either you get a pick, or you, or not, <laughs> or not. And if you don't get a pick, then it's essentially a 5v6. You do threaten enemy to take a specific angle. But you can see the uh, Mayhem is very disciplined in how they move, right? You can see, starting already, Mayhem is going to do a 5-1 split. And you will see throughout the course of this map, Mayhem is going to focus on doing a 5-1 split a lot. So these guys are going to try their very hardest to protect each other, while, uh, while Valiant, well, Valiant is going to try their hardest to split. So we do have already have two different wing conditions, right? So the reason why uh, Zen died here, right, is because they they don't, they don't aren't together. You can see the Bap and the Zen. I'm going to move it here. You can see the Bap and Zen and Orisa are together. So you have three people together. The, 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 the Tracer is finally coming back. But if you look at this, the most important person that can protect the, 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 the Zen is missing. You don't have the Sigma. The Sigma is already uh, starting on its flank. And the reason why Sigma is so powerful, right, and it's such a strong counter against Pool, is because when the enemy pull, the Sigma drops a shell uh, or pushes a shell and it counters the rock and whatever damage comes after. So it counters the hot combo. As long as the Sigma has shell, it counters the pull combo. So a lot of times on defense, right, if you know the enemy is going to push very, very hard with an ultimate and with pull, a lot of times the Sigma can just play with the Orisa, right? A lot, uh, I, I see in a lot of occasions, the Contenders team or in, 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 in lower level team or even sometimes Overwatch League team, the Sigma flanks and they flanks and they flanks and they flank and they spend like 90% of the fight flanking and, 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 well, I mean, you can win off that method, but it isn't perfect because uh, that can be punished. If the enemy knows how to uh, how to focus on one side a little bit more than the other side, the Sigma can die. So for example, there are some people Let's say you put a Sigma over here and you put a team here. That looks like a strong strategy, right? Not really, because if you break the Orisa shell, if you focus on Orisa shell and you break the Orisa shell and the Orisa has to fall back, right? You can just make a hard push for the Sigma. So you can establish a position, maybe the Orisa shells over here, and your own Sigma pushes out the Sigma and maybe the Tracer can, can isolate the Sigma as well. Or the Tracer can come from here and go in. So it's easy to isolate the Sigma and kill the Sigma. Not to mention if the Sigma is away from the team, it's easy to isolate each shell and break each shell. So probably you break the Orisa shell, force these guys to move back, and then you focus on the other guy holding the, the, the angle. So not always, not always can you hold like two different angles. In this case, because the choke is very, very tight, uh, that Mayhem choose to play together is is, is is the choice they make. And it's actually a really, really powerful hold. Very, very hard to practice, right? 
Uh, you can see the Valiant is not even going to try to break this by, by pushing this area, right? This, there are like fucking four, five people over here. If they try to break this area, like Orisa, Sigma, Bab, Zed, try to push this area, it's going to take them a long time. It's going to take them... Essentially, they'll only be able to break it after they get like Baptist Ultimate uh, or, or if like Mayhem fucks up or something. And you can see if everyone plays over there, Widow can't get much of a line of sight as well. Because if KSP play over here, you'll see where KSP play later. Uh, KSP is going to play... You can see KSP is going to flank there. And he's gonna see jack shit because uh, he has to push all the way in, he can't see anything. Tracer comes for him and KSP has to go all the way to the other side, right? You can see, he grapple all the way to the other side. And then you can see he'll hold another angle, and then after that he'll hold another angle, and then he'll go up, and finally he will play on this angle most of the time. He'll, he'll play on this angle like that most of the time. So you can see it's really, really hard for KSP to get anything done. So Mayhem's version of uh, defense, where they play all together, right, as one unit, uh, it, it makes it really, really hard. Uh, one second, let me... Oh, okay, this, this works. It makes it really, really hard for Valiant. It makes it really, really hard for Valiant to get anything done because they are, they are, one of their DPS is essentially useless. Yeah? One of the DPS is trying to create an off angle that is essentially useless. So if you look at this, we can already see, right? we can already see, uh, what's it called? Valiant uh, placed out. They have the Tracer and the Zen splitting one angle. They have the Sigma on high ground. Uh, and of course, they have the Orisa playing on, on payload and they have the Widow over here. So they have no choice, right? Valiant has no choice. They, they don't have an Ash. Uh, show break wise, Mayhem has dynamite. BQB, you can see he, BQB is already at seventy percent. Uh, and and you know Mayhem is playing this very annoying style where they they are, they are, they are shielding like this. So even if you are playing in the front like this, you can't see any shield, right? There are a lot of people, Reinhardt and Orisa included, they throw their shield on defense like this, like this, like this. But uh, Shock and Mayhem, they like to play their show a little bit more uh, consciously. Uh, Shock in Nepal does this the same thing as well. And essentially, you won't be able to see anything from a safe area. So if you are a Zen and you want to try to break the show, you can't see shit, right? You have to essentially you can't even see shit. You have to essentially you can you can't see shit until you like play somewhere like here. And then the danger comes from you got you being halted. Because what if you get halted to the side? Like you get three to one, you halted up and you die, right? So it means that the sigma is forced to play down here. So it means that if you want to break this show that Mayhem set up. If you want to have strong fine line pressure, right? If you think that your win condition is to break the show and and, and and kill Mayhem, then you need the Sigma with the Zen. Because if you don't have the Sigma with the Zen, they will have they will halt the Zen and the Zen will die. So you can see a Valiant is not actually going to do that because even if the Zen plays somewhere like here, it's actually really dangerous. Right? You can see if the enemy is over here and you see the fucking Zen, the Sigma and the Zen playing over here, you can just focus down the, the, the Sigma really easily and the Sigma and, and, and the Zen and essentially they won't be able to maintain the push for long. And that, that's the most important thing. You need to maintain the push on this corner. Right? You can't just break show and then you're like, oh, we win. No, you have to break show and you have to shoot the people behind the show where they don't have any show anymore. If you try to break shield and then you know you're like ah yeah we win you will lose because the enemy has other shields and the enemy has five people standing together so after you break shield your own shield is broken and you will die so the only way to win like areas like this is you need to maintain a push you need to break the shield and maintain the push and the only way you can break a shield and then maintain pushing power is to ha is to have like a decent amount of people playing from one angle you need the Orisa and Zen minimum like minimum from the main angle you need good shield break and you need a little bit of sustain so you need Orisa. Uh, and then you need a Zen. And then, we, we, like we said, the Zen is in danger, so you probably need a Sigma as well. So, yeah, well, why do I say probably? Because there are some maps where the Orisan and Zen can play together without danger of getting halted. For example, in Nepal. In Nepal, Centum especially, there are a lot of times where uh, people split into two groups, and then one side has the Orisa and the Zen, the other side has the Sigma and the Baptiste. And the reason for that is because it's a lot harder to, uh, to pull your Zen when the line of sight is very, very long. In this case, because the line of sight is really, really short, right? And because in Nepal, like, it's it's long corridors, long, long corridors. So even if you send your pool, it's very easy. Like, it's harder to kill the Zen. But in this case, if your Zen plays over here, and he gets pulled to the side, the Zen, the Zen essentially dies. So the, it's very, very hard for them to mount the, the whole 3 3 4 2 angles where the Zen plays over here. The, the, the better choice is probably just move the Zen away and not play the Zen with the Orisa. So kind of like what they're doing now, right? The Zen and the Tracer plays over here. And then the Zen can give the Tracer the AWP and then, you know, hence, it's kind of like Brigitte, hence the Tracer has a higher chance of winning the, the, the enemy Tracer, blah, blah, blah. At least that is the that is what they're trying to do. Why don't, why don't, thanks for the follow, Sky Invoke. Why don't follow, Florida want to split a bit? Uh, I, I can't answer it, yeah. Hit more hits. What if Valiant goes upstairs instead? Uh, so if Valen goes upstairs, right, six people goes upstairs like this, you will see that you can't see anyone from Mayhem. Look, you can't see anyone from Mayhem. You can't see jack shit. Well, a lot of times when the, if, uh, if Mayhem decides to play like in a, in a more like 
traditional. You know, you, you play rank, right? And you know that sometimes people play over here. If you guys play rank in Rialto, you know like the DPS like to play over here. Sometimes some people like to play over here. Sometimes some people like to play. And you have like the main tank like playing around this corner. I mean, I'm not not about balcony, but like around the corner. So if you play on high ground, if the enemy plays like and you play on high ground, you can shoot anyone, right? But if you look at how Mayhem plays, right? It's fucking hard. In fact, even though uh, the Sigma plays over here, most of the time Gargoyles actually like keep close to the enemy team, uh, keep close to his own team and play over here. So if you go by high ground, you really can't do much until you drop from high ground. And of course, uh, that's why Valiant's second solution was to have some people go high ground and some people stay on low ground. This way, at least you have some viable threat from low ground and hopefully, right, if you have one threat like Orisa over here and you have like the fucking Zen and Tracer over here, it will force it will force the Tracer and the Ash and the, the Zen to move away from holding this position, right? So if they need to mark this Tracer, hopefully this Sigma will have uh, this Sigma will have some uh, power because if, if you see, you can see, if they if they move away from the from this area, if they move away from this area, the Sigma will start to be able to see stuff. So the more pressure the other angles emit, right, the more pressure the other angles emit, the more likely the Sigma will do stuff from high ground. So Valiant isn't going up six men on high ground because they are not a rush comp, they are not a composition that essentially uh, can shoot, they can't see anything, they can't see anything. The only time they want to play on high ground is if they have a Lucio, right? If they have a Lucio, Ryan, Orisa, that sort of shit, and you want to rush the enemy team, then that's when you go You go from the high ground. If the enemy still sets up this way, you'll go from the high ground, you'll drop down and then you, you, you'll kill them. Of course, if you try to play a rush comp, however, that Mayhem probably wouldn't set up like that, right? They'll set up like this. The set like they have some people over here, there's some people over here, there's some people over here. Because obviously, if you're a rush com, they obviously don't want to play directly under you. So the mayhem is only playing this way, right? They want to control the corner, they want to break the corner, and they want to control the line of sight by playing this way because it's a mirror composition. Okay, so uh, one thing I want to note right here that uh, that that I think Valiant Valiant the, the Zen died right is that actually they had if you guys I want to show you guys this. They have another opportunity to kill the Zen. So Zen died here once, right? Like Lastro died here once, and because he, he tries to uh, he tries to rotate, and the the, the 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 Sigma wasn't over there. So I'm gonna show you guys the second time. But Lastro almost died the second time because if Lastro died once rotating from here to here, uh, and 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 of course the Sigma wasn't here, does it mean that the Sigma must be here to to help Zen rotate through? Yes, the Sigma must be there to help Zen rotate. Also, also you can see that that Mayhem tried to play really aggressively. Uh, they they're very explosive Mayhem. They try to play one area like really really quickly and every time they have a small opportunity they try to bust open that area with cooldowns and explosive play and then if they can't get any kills like right here they'll just go back see they couldn't get any kill they go back a lot of times they, they do that just to get a lot of uh, ultimates uh, a lot of cooldowns so say you make a play like this right and you hot someone it forces the enemy their show breaks a lot of shit of theirs breaks. It forces Dreamer to maybe fortify. It forces McGravy to use a kinetic grasp. So pushes like that, even if you don't kill anyone, it's not totally useless. You can see McGravy right now doesn't have uh, his grasp, but doesn't have his rock. So not the worst play if you if you even if you don't kill anyone, because like I said, uh, and, and I think I wrote somewhere here. They are right here. Ah, here a single cooldown for every single moment, right? Uh, where Mayhem is very very conscious about each cooldown they make. First of all, like you know, show alone when you show like that. Uh, you will notice that when this show break, and I'll show you guys later, when this show break, May Fate already has a second show. And uh, they don't really use Hot or Fortify when not necessary. So it's actually the first 30 seconds you'll notice that Fate actually doesn't uh, need to use, like, what's it called? Fate doesn't actually need to use, like, Fortify or anything. Alright, just look at this. He used a Hot to kill the Zen, but before that, he never used Hot, he never used Fortify, he never used anything. Uh, and the reason for that is very simple. It's because Mayhem understands the importance of each cooldown. So if Mayhem, if Mayhem makes a push over here, they will just use the necessary cooldown. They use like what? Two cooldowns or something, and then the enemy is forced to use four. So Mayhem is one of those teams, along with Soul Dynasty, that they are very, very, very specialized slow play team. They're very conscious about each cooldown, and they're very used to playing this very, very, uh, very, very thrifty style of play. Like it's very, very powerful and very hard to break through, especially on defense. And Valiant plays a more swashbuckling, more flexible uh, play style. Okay, so, so that being said, right? That being said, uh, I want I want to show you guys because Lastro died once already, right? So the question is, how did Lastro get across then? Did Sigma come and help him? Because we talk about how you know when 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 Zen when Zen tries to uh rotate from one side to another, when Zen tries to rotate to the pivot point, when Zen tries to rotate like that, uh, you know he, they need the Sigma. And in this case, the Sigma is on high ground already. So we, let's take a look at whether Lastro actually get to the pivot point and it's the, the second time. He shoots, he shoots. And you even notice something, right? Where's the Sigma? The Sigma is still not here. You can see. And this is, I think, 
I would say val- I would say okay, I would say it's Valiant weakness, but it's not a very strong weakness. Because what how Valiant plays is Valiant plays really aggressively and they play very intuitively. So what I mean by intuitively is they are sh- I think how their coach is they're shown a couple of places that is good to flank. The timing of it, I don't think Valiant cares as much. I don't think Last Row was ever told that you know it's dangerous to rotate if you don't have a Sigma. It's it's just try to stay alive, like it's just a general concept. So uh, Valiant probably uh, uh, I think Valiant coaches probably told them a couple of things. I think Valiant coaches told them this. Uh, told them this. They go flank with Zen and Trace over here. Sigma tries to play from high ground and tries to push them. And then, you know, the rest of the team tries to push it. I think that is what Valiant told them. And then, no more. They didn't tell... Valiant never said anything else. And just tell them, you know, just, just focus on, like, concepts and one-on-ones and stuff like that. Because, essentially, they are... Valiant, when I look at them play, they are... Un- raw power. Is what I think of raw power and not polish. I, I don't think when I look at Valiant, I don't think wow, this is such a polished push or wow, this is such a polish and and, and, and you know insanely clean X Y Z. No, it's it's more of like tempo, aggression, intuition. Like it, it's like a fucking animal. It's, it's like a bear. I mean, I, I mean that in like like a, like a compliment. When I look at Mayhem play, they're like the professor. You know, they are like okay, we always use only this one cooldown. I'm very disciplined using my forty five. I'm very disciplined using X Valiant. Use cooldowns like no bias business. They're like, alright, I feel like I need to use 45 here or I die, and they just use it. So it's not, they're not very efficient. But yeah, in, in, I know a lot of people say that uh, Valiant is. Uh, I'm, I'm trying to think of a, a team that's similar to Valiant. And I, I. The only team that is similar to Valiant in my eyes is uh, Titans, Vancouver Titans. Oh, Vancouver Titans. I, I need to make that, 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 that differentiator. Yeah, because yeah, all Vancouver Titans also didn't have strong and polished. Uh, clinical play they, they mainly focus on understanding the flow of the gameplay the tempo and then make the, the uh, make smart individual decisions in taking splits in taking splits and off angle uh shock however also doesn't play this way i know a lot of people say shock is aggressive but they're not aggressive they are opportunistic so they're kind of like a mix between valiant and mayhem they won't always flank they would find many different ways of breaking through sometimes they'll play like mayhem sometimes they'll play like valiant so shock is different I, only sh- shock only plays like shock. No one else plays like shock. To be honest, I think some people say Paris plays like shock. I I don't see it. To be honest, <laughs> I don't see it. There was a point in time where I, I thought Paris was really good, but it was like a couple of matches, like two or three matches, and then no more. And I don't know what happened to Paris Eternal, but but yeah, I don't see it. Shock plays like shock, and no one else. Uh, ah, Valiant plays like Shanghai Dragons. Yeah, Valiant plays like Shanghai Dragons. Yeah, so. Valiant, Shanghai Dragons, and Titan. It's because it's not a very rare playstyle. Right? This, this playstyle of always taking off angles, splits, and, and understanding tempo and playing for very aggressive traits. Uh, it's, not a very, it's not a rare playstyle by any means. A lot of teams want to do something like that, but kind of failed. For example, I think Gladiators wants to do something like this. But you know, in the previous, in the previous pre- presentation, we talked about how Gladiators uh, didn't do it really, really well. So uh, I think a lot of teams want to play like that. Because it, it, looks not, it doesn't look cool per se, but it... It looks cool. I mean, it feels great, <laughs> and it's tempo, so very very powerful keywords, and it it, it, it looks uh, yeah. It just it just it just feels great to to play, always play on tempo and always fight first, and you can win off this way as well. But Gladiators is not there yet, so yeah. I think I've I talked to da- David before, and I think David the Gladiators wants to copy more like Shock, but currently they are more like uh, Valiant and Shanghai, but not as good. So, but we will see. Maybe one what they they will reach that kind of like epitome of that that kind of play style one day so as a as a coach you also need to understand like what kind of play style you want your team to play you can just say i'll improve you in everything because and say i'll you will be a perfect player because there are a lot of uh, areas in overwatch where there are multiple ways to break a choke so being able to identify like that 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 direction you want your team to go and then applying to your team is is important it's not just i see five mistakes i point out five mistakes you need to also build towards something at the end of the week you need at the start of the week you need to say uh, we need to master playing slow right and this is these are the three factors in Blink I want us to use ultimate second. Or I want us to use ultimate second when X, Y, Z. I want us to track ultimates really well. I want us to uh, create a game plan based off the ultimates they use. And I want us to try to always have good position before the start of the fight. Uh, you can uh, Something like, I don't care if we lose the fight. Right, but at the start of the fight, five seconds before the fight, our position must be good. Because the, the fight can only be won or the fight can only be easy to win if the position before the fight is good. So, you know, you, you force your team to focus on one concept that builds up to a, a general play style. That's why the strong teams, I think Krusty said before, the strongest teams are teams with a play style. The strongest teams are teams that makes perfect play because there are no perfect plays, right? They are like optimal play. There are 
suboptimal play, but suboptimal play can still win you the game if you're really, really good at a, a specific play style or a specific suboptimal play. So, uh, yeah, so generally start of the week, you say something, you, 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 want, to, you want the team to be, you, you have in your head that you want the team to be this way, and you identify, like, you identify uh, properties or like uh, uh, concepts that allows your team to play towards one area. If you try to force your team to, to copy Mayhem and the next, the next week you try to force your team to copy Shock, it's just going to be really messy, and your team wouldn't have like a fixed solution or a fixed concept for like different parts of the map, essentially. Okay, so... Back in Singapore already? I am back in Singapore, yeah. Share is shootable from the inside for Valiant. They would have to drop eventually, but without an Ash, they would probably have to keep a straight up brawl. Thanks for the follow, PandaFest. Hi, Daddy J Prawn. Do you think Shex is the best tracer in Overwatch? No, he's no, no way he's the best tracer in Overwatch. Like, he's a very good tracer, but not the best tracer. <laughs> Not definitely not the best tracer. Nice pulse bomb though. Yeah. He seems to hit all his pulse bomb every game. I mean I don't even know what he's like the best pulse bomb tracer. I, I don't know. I've never really compared him with the other tracer. He's a good tracer. He's a definitely a good tracer though. <clears throat> Why can't they just be good for one year? For Dallas View? I don't know what's yeah, I don't know what's rough with Dallas Sphere, to be honest. I honestly don't. I suspect it's a coaching method. Because I don't think the coaches of Dallas are, like, lazy or, like, dumb or anything. That could be right, but maybe it's, like, a coaching methodology or something. Maybe they, they know the right things, but they, 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 they haven't been able to uh, teach their players But XYZ. I have no idea. How do you plan fight in this meta? Cause it's based on individuals taming angles. You don't. You plan fights by knowing what position to take when you start before you start pushing forward. So you can't just like six men. You see the enemy show. You're like six men group together, boys. Let's push in front. Top two kid. No, you're gonna lose, right? If you six men push together, like as one unit, you're gonna lose. You need to have specific position. Your Batman Zen must be standing in a specific particular area. Uh, and, and where they stand is dictated by where your Sigma and Orisa wants to push. Your, your Tracer has to decide on what angle he wants to flank. So positioning before the fight is extremely important for double shield. Right? You need, your Sigma needs to decide whether he wants to flank or he wants to play with the Orisa. And in some parts of the map, playing with the Orisa is better. In some parts of the map, flanking is better. So you need to decide early how you want to position so that your supports know where to position. And then your, yeah, so the, 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 the tank position and DPS position are important. Because you need the, the support needs to know that, to know how they want to position. And after you get that position right, right, the pre-position right, you can you can begin to W key. So you set up the position first and then you start to W key. So there's a little bit of setup, and the setup is different from like dive and every single thing. So Valiant currently uh, when they are trying to set up their position, right? When they're trying to set up their position, what happens is wait, where is it? The position they try to set up is this, you can see. Sigma and Orisa on, 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 wait, I don't think you guys can see as easy. Uh, I'll just use this slide first. Sigma and Orisa on, on Orisa on the payload, Baptiste on the payload, uh, Sigma flanking on high ground, uh, Widow is flanking, and Tracer and Zen on the, on, on, on the left. So if I if I use this, uh, maybe, what, what was the timestamp for this? 302, right? So after the Zen died, oh wait, also, if you notice, the Zen actually managed to, 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 to rotate. And how did the Zen rotate without getting put? Because you can see the Sigma is actually really far away. How did he rotate without being pulled? Because the fate was actually really, really low. So I think actually they could have killed Zen again. I'm pretty sure they could have killed Zen again, or at least forced the, forced the drone. But uh, what happened was, fate already put the shell over here, right? And uh, essentially, he already has a shell right here. So he's going to he's gonna push, because he, he, wants, he wants to put his shell early, so he gets two shell. So the enemy team, he wants the enemy team to like push this corner, breaks this shell, and the moment they break the shell, and they... They, they want, he wants them to use like shield, so he wants Dreamer to throw out a shield, and then both of them throw at each other shield. But when Dreamer shields break, there is like 4 or 5 seconds where Dreamer shield uh, is broken. But Fate would be able to put up the second shield straight away. And the, the difference is because Fate gets to put up a shield before the fight starts, if he plays a, a, a more passive shield angle like this. And Dreamer to push the corner needs to use the shield, so his cooldown starts to tick. Uh, fake cooldown starts sticking straight away the moment you put down this show. While Dreamer, if he puts down a show right here, it only starts sticking when you put it push it down. So both of them can kill both. Both of them can trade out the shells, but then Fate will have one more and Dreamer will have none. And that's how you win and how, how you control this corner right here. 
So that's why the, the, the rest of the team are actually trying to flank. Like the Sigma is trying to flank, the Tracer is going to try to flank, the Zen is going to try to flank. But before the Zen can flank, he needs to be in this position, right? Because once he's in this position, he can flank from the outside. But if he's in this position, you know, he's in fucking danger. So he needs to get to the pivot point first. And I, that's why this is called a pivot point. Because this area allows you to, it gives you option. It allows you to push the payload. It allows you to flank from this area. It allows you to go back on high ground. It also allows you to go behind the enemy line. So that's why it's a pivot area. It's a powerful area for the attacking team, required uh, for the attacking team so that they can take a 50-55. That's why in the old days, right, I think last year or something, a lot of people like to set up on high ground like that because they don't want to give the enemies that pivot point, right? So a lot like when you play Bastion composition, you set up on high ground like that. Because if you play Bastion composition, you set up somewhere else and you give the enemy the pivot point, it's easy to flank. That's why when you play Bastion composition, you just, you just set up early this way and then you take the fight over this way. Yeah, so the enemy you can see there's no pivot point. If the best thing set up here, where's the pivot point? You can see that <laughs> probably this becomes the pivot point, but it's not a very strong pivot point. So very weak. So it is set up in an area to specifically not allow the enemy to get a good 50-50. Thanks for the follow. A video game royale. Royale with cheese. What's wrong with gladiators? They have quite strong players. I mean they do, but I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with gladiators. Yeah. Because when I look at gladiators' uh, gameplay, right, they do some things that are like overly smart. Do, do, do you know what I'm trying to get? Like, they split, but they split wrongly. So I talked about this uh, in, the, in the previous slide before. If you guys weren't here for my previous uh, vote, you guys can go take a look at it. If you, especially if you guys are gladiators, gladiators fan, right? But, uh, so I wrote here moments before disaster. And Gladiator split into four different angles. But it wasn't a good split. Right? Not all splits are good split. If all splits are good split, you could just go into rank and say, you know, that's a split, that's a split, that's a split. No, sometimes a split is just an overextending. <laughs> I mean, if someone splits like like really far away, that, that could just be an overextension. So what's the difference between a split and an overextension? Right? I, I said all these all these are the difference. The difference between a split and just bad positioning is all all this, all this. The terrain, the terrain, the enemy composition, positioning the enemy ultimates versus good and bad split. And even though gladiators plays aggressively and do split, I don't think their splits are very good. Well, valiant splits are generally really good. That's why I said, uh, for, for now, gladi gladiators is a strong team and they do split sometimes well, but they also split badly sometimes. So gladiators is kind of like a... They're kind of like a, 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 a Shanghai Dragons wannabe. Like, they, they, they have... Their playstyle looks similar to Shanghai Dragons, but a lot worse, and, and a lot worse than Valiant as well. So, Shanghai Dragons like here, Valiant is like maybe below, I don't think Valiant is better than Shanghai Dragons, and then Gladiator is like below it some more. And the difference in how I rank them is the quality of that playstyle, which they all three have very similar the base playstyle. By planning, I mean the short call seems weird, because it's based on angles and out, there's no like flow of the fight. Uh, yeah, so, no, normally, uh, that's why a lot of people say that a uh, double show is a coach, a coach driven composition. Because the coach needs to say, like, you need to do X, Y, Z. And of course, I think Team Dodge also played this really, really well. And, but Team Dodge is, yeah, an exception. But uh, Team Dodge also understands how to uh, hold different angles. So I don't think you need to short call, like, really crazy. Uh, you just need, you need, just need to understand. It's because, like you mentioned, you raised a good point, right? In the fight itself, you are not going to say, I want to hold this, I want to hold that, I want to hold this. You're not going to say something like that. But, you at least you won't do it every single time but the sigma that the team should know that the sigma wants to split and the sigma probably should say hey guys i'm gonna split uh and i try to control high ground and then with that piece of information you the rest of the position is based off that the, the fact that you guys are gonna split or if you have like baptist window you say i'm gonna push the enemy in, uh, around the corner in three two one okay then then the enemy uh, your teammates know that they're gonna play with the orisa because you guys are gonna use baptist window right so uh, generally, you will still call gen generally what you're going to do. But you're not going to be overly specific and say, Zen, I want you to stand here. Baptiste, I want you to stand here. You're not going to do something like that. But you will have like a rough understanding of whether you're gonna, you guys are going to split or you guys are going to play. You might not know exactly where he's going to stand, but you know where he's going to patrol and what angle he's going to uh, try to pressure from. So Matt Gravy was talking about how the Mayhem's weird hard or in picking and playstyle was one of the biggest reasons he and the team struggled this map. What's your opinion on that style of double shield over more conventional off angle uh, style? Uh, eh, both are good. I I I am a strong believer that there are different playstyles, right? I do not think Overwatch has like a perfect play. 
if you could hold in a specific angle, but you could use different ultimates to achieve your purpose. And perfect play, I think, can be defined by many coaches differently. So Mayhem's playstyle has its strengths and weaknesses. And I really do like Mayhem's playstyle, but it is not a playstyle you can do if you don't have a team of strong coaches and if you don't have a team of players that really trust their coaches. In Overwatch League, there are teams where players have, I wouldn't say they don't trust their coach, but the the, 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 the amount of things that a coach might tell the team is different. So th it's the same for Justice and, 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 and Gladiators. Uh, the, the way the players, because different players, right, different personalities. So the way the players uh, execute a strategy or like the way a players learn a strategy might be at different rates for like different kind of uh, teams with different amount of conflicts, with different amount of personalities. So may you, for Mayhem to play like the way they do, they need like a pretty strong coaching staff and need like a really high amount of trust between the coaching staff and the players to play this sort of coaching staff. You won't be able to replicate this in like an open division team or like an, or other art teams because it's a, it's a very disciplined play style. When I look at Mayhem, I think of cl clinical, right? I think of like military style uh, type play. So, okay, thanks for the following. Uh, thanks for the follow, Glacio. So, uh, let's go back. Let's go back. Where were we? Where were we? Uh, we talked about how the Zen actually got to rotate to the pivot point for free. Right, and if you look at the Zen, you know, you look at the Zen, he's going to flank with the Tracer, and you can see this is angle number one. They're going to try to fight over this angle, not angle number one. Angle number two, the Orisa and the Baptiste, right? You can see the Baptiste playing here means that they don't actually have a lot of pushing power from this angle, but they have a lot of sustained power. Dreamer will almost always be able to stay alive as much as possible, or at least eat, relatively eat, easier for him to stay alive. If you look at Fate right now, his shield broke. Very sad, right? His shield broke. But if you look at it, Dreamer Show is going to break as well, and his Dreamer Show break as well. But if you look at Fate, Fate already has a second show, and this is what I'm talking about. When they play this kind of off-angle heavy style, it is extremely hard to win the show war against the defending team. And this is what Mayhem is trying to do, right? They're not playing like wide angles, they're playing like all together six men uh, off-angle to win the show war easily. So the advantage they get is they win the show war because they get to set up two shows. They get to set up one show very early before the fight starts. The show gets broken, they get up like a second show, and Dreamer always needs to use his show to push the corner, so he'll almost always not be able to sustain this push, right? In a, a short brief time, like 3 seconds, his show will break. Not to mention that Dreamer doesn't have a Zen, so you can see they don't have a Zen, the Zen is over here. The Sigma is on high ground, what does that mean? It means that Mayhem show doesn't actually break that easily, right? Not only would May uh, Fate have his next show, Gargoyle also has a very healthy show in 790. So, Essentially, the way that Valiant is currently playing, it cannot break Mayhem Show. Their main win coin is not to break Mayhem Show. They will not be able to do that. The, the two main damage from the Show break comes from the Bapti, uh, from, comes from the Sigma and the Zen. Actually, it comes from the Zen. Zen generally does the most amount of Show damage. And the Zen even isn't anywhere near, right? The Zen is actually helping the Tracer to get an angle. So Valiant is trying to win all variants. They're trying to, they're trying to, they're trying to establish uh, strong angles from multiple angles and then try to force uh, and try to, you know, finally break Mayhem's show. So for example, Sigma probably doesn't want to stand over here. Like Sigma can't see anything. So uh, probably in the perfect world, what Valiant wants to do is this two, Zen and Tracer, forces out Yaki so that Yaki has to play with his team. Once Yaki plays with his team and stop fighting these guys over here, uh, uh, Mayhem will not have a 5-1 split, they will have a 6-man group or relatively a 6-man group. And then Sigma, once the payload pushes past this corner, like maybe over here, a little bit more, Orisa will start playing with the point, Sigma will try to flare out and play from this angle. So I'll show you guys what I mean, right? Uh, actually, I think in this fight, did, did, did someone die in this fight? Uh, okay, so that, this is what I mean. You can see Gravy, right? Because he couldn't get a good angle, he couldn't get a good angle, he's going to try to take an off angle. Because this is what Valiant does. See? They take off angles, they try to, they try their best to uh, create different angles to pressure Mayhem. So you can see they're trying to take an off angle. You can see he can't see shit. He can't see shit, he can't see the Orisa, so that's why he's going to take a different off angle. And he's going to play like that, right? So, in the perfect world, what should what Valiant actually really wants to happen is they want the Zen and the Tracer to be attacking this way. Right, the Zen and the Tracer to be attacking this way, down the line, attacking these guys. They want like a, a different angle here, they want a main angle here, they want the Baptiste healing these guys and not taking a lot of damage. And they want the Widow to be like rotating around trying to get a pick off these guys, you know, these guys that needs to be playing over this very tight angle. So you will have like a lot of different angles, right? You have at least three main angles, you have at least three main angles. You have the angle of the Orisa, you have the angle of the Sigma, one, two, three. And then the Widow of course is, is can take which however angle he wants. 
within within reasons, of course. So that's what Valiant wants to do, right? You need to give a uh, video your your opportunity to get picks, and uh, and and it's you need to play like that because it's way easier for the video to get picked than if the video is playing something like that. You can't see shit, but once you start spreading out like that, you can make picks like that. However, we already talked about this many many times. Valiant doesn't have a Zen. The Zen is you know playing with the tracer and helping the tracer out, but Valiant doesn't have a Zen. And the problem about Valiant not having a Zen is that Valiant cannot win the show war. It's impossible. They can't win the show war. Look at look at McGravish. I'll, I'll show you guys how fast his show break. He cannot win the show war because one team has a Zen, right? One team has a fucking Zen shooting show twenty four seven, and one team has a Zen flanking to create another angle. So Valiant won't be able to sustain this. Remember what we talked about in, in in if you want to break the show, if you want to break the show as a win condition, you need to break the show and then sustain the push. Mayhem already had that little trick in positioning the show so that they always have one show up more than the enemy team. You can see Dreamer doesn't even have his show yet because he's still waiting for his show, right? He's, he has fucking like 5 seconds to his show. The only person that has his show right now is McGravy. So McGravy is taking an angle on its own but they only have one show. The enemy has two. They have the Sigma show which they just kept and you can see Gargoyle has still like, what the fuck? Fucking 760 show and Yaki has like... Yaki just throw out his show and, 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 and it's still at 156. So, Overall, the numbers just heavily favors Mayhem, and uh, McGreevy will not be able to sustain this push. So after he gets stunned, right, McGreevy, it's, it's impossible for McGreevy to do anything. He has to come back. And of course, once McGreevy is weakened, right, McGreevy is weakened, because Mayhem focused the show really, really hard, right, uh, he has to run away. And if you look at Dreamer, he actually already used his show. I can show you Dreamer as well. If you look at Dreamer's POV, right, he's, used to, he's forced to use so many ultimates, uh, forced to use so many cooldown. So he pushes, he sees his, he sees the Sigma flanking, you can see, he can see McGrady flanking. So Dreamer has to push as well, he can't just let McGrady flank alone, so he has to hold an angle. Right, but he's gonna die, so he doesn't have a show, so he's gonna throw a show right here. He's gonna, 40, he's gonna even hot, but he's gonna do nothing, he's gonna fortify. So, how many cooldowns did they use? They use like 1, 2, 3. Uh, for Orisa use 3, McGrady use like 3, they have nothing. They essentially have nothing. And Fate, these guys have the easiest job of their life, right? Fate doesn't even need to use any cooldowns. Until after you know, after the the Orisa uses their uses the fortify, uses everything, and he hots the Sigma, forces the Sigma to use grasp. You know, it's easy clap for 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 for, for Fate and Gargoy. They are in way less pressure and danger as compared to like the enemy team. And of course, once Gargoy knows that the enemy team is weak, he starts to push out. So you look at Gargoy's uh, position, right? He's actually just marking, marking. He's playing really close to his Orisa. Remember, we talked about how Gargoy doesn't split. He plays really close to his Orisa, but the moment. Right, the moment they win the show wall, look at that, break the show wall, break the show wall, now he can push the Sigma, now he can push the Sigma. Why? Because the enemy has no more shells, no more shells, no more health, nothing. The Zen isn't even in proximity, so he can push the Sigma more aggressively. So now we see Gargoyle splitting. So Gargoyle, Gargoyle only splits, or Mayhem only plays more aggressively when they have like a significant advantage. And this is why I say Mayhem play is clinical. They don't just flank for the sake of flanking, they don't just flank because off angles are good. They flank when the condition is met. So this is Mayhem's playstyle, and this is also so Dynasty playstyle. Thanks for the follow, Alpha Map. Gundam Jin just clicks shares and team has no more pressure left there. Yeah, I mean, even though they do have Zen and Tracer, it's not easy. And of course, you can still lose like the 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 one-on-one. The -on -one. We can take a look at Shares POV and see why he lost to Gundam Jin. So let's see whether it's his fault, All right? Let's, I'll increase it to one. Boom! And that's that's the problem because for the why is this thing like that for this team for the tracer right if you want to take this angle look at how easy this is because remember we talked about chokes we talked about how this is a choke and that is a choke this is a choke as well so if i'm a zen and i see the tracer i'm just fucking spamming into the fucking doorway right for the enemy team to get a viable angle viable threatening angle into my back line I, likewise, can get an angle on the tracer, I can discard the tracer, I can kill the tracer easily. So, so it's not just about creating an angle, it's not, it's not as easy as, I have one angle over here, I have one angle over here, I, I, it wins! Remember, what, when I talk about gladiators, I talk about an important thing. What did I say? I said a couple of things, I said this, cover of some of the flanks. So if you want to split, right, you need to have decent cover. If you split from one area, but the area is the biggest, widest motherfucking space in the whole wide world. It's like a fucking seal, a, a few, you know? Just a few. No cover, no walls, no whatever. Even if you split five, six angles, it's easy for the enemy to clear each of these angles very easily. So you need some cover. The more cover you have, the better. Uh, and of course, I, I put the rain because of course sometimes it's also a choke, right? Covers are also chokes. So in this case, you know, you do have a bit of cover because you can play like that. But it's also very small. Uh, probably what would be more dangerous for 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 val for val uh, for mayhem is if the choke looks like this, right? Then if the choke looks like this, right? Uh, the tracer can essentially just play around the cover, 
blink and, and threaten the enemy and it's a lot harder for Zen to shoot through and you know hit the tracer because this is such a small choke. So even when you split, there is a difference in the power of the split, right? The quality of the split. Sometimes if you have a lot of cover and you can easily access the enemy, it is a good split. And technically you can access the enemy very easily from this. The only problem is the choke and the, the, the fact that you know the the choke the, the fact that the enemy can spam it very easily because of the nature of the choke. The second enemy composition and position. If the enemy doesn't have Yaki, and the enemy is playing, I don't know, like Echo, maybe not Echo, but like, I don't know, man, like Mei, maybe Mei, you know, like in the old days, people play Mei Hanzo, yeah, then this flank becomes really easy, right, very easy, because the enemy can't mark you, like, what are you gonna do, they could shoot, the Zen could shoot at you, but they no longer have Yaki patrolling the fucking corridor, so, you know, enemy composition is also very important, right, if they have less enemies that can match the flank, you are, you have an easier time. Lastly, enemies ultimate. Uh, certain ultimates are really good if the enemies are split. So that's kind of like the exception. We'll talk about that later. But gladiators, I talk about how, you know, even when the terrain wasn't good or the enemy composition wasn't favorable for them, gladiators gladiators still split too much. And that's why they lost the fight. Because their split was not a split. Their split was overextending. So the difference between split and overextension is understanding, right, the quality of those split and whether you can sustain those splits, essentially. I'm back to work, so I won't be in stream as much as before, but I watched the VOD. Will do, Momotage. Should have Strax go gone up those stairs to avoid the choke. So, Alpha Fuse, uh, let's, let's, let's revisit that, 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 that concept, right? That idea. Because that's an interesting idea. So, well, well, Alpha idea was, maybe Shrek should go like this. Right, should go like this. And... Hmm. There is a problem if you, if you want Shrek to play like that. The problem is that the Zen can no longer help him. Because the reason why they're playing over this area is because Zen can help him and Zen can rotate back to his team quite easily. But if if, if Shex goes all the way up here, right, then you, you essentially no longer need the Zen. So you play the Zen here as long as possible and then you will just move back to the team. Yeah. Uh, also dangerous for the Zen. I think if you want to play if you want Shex to play like that, right? If you want Shex to because we need to not just think about what angles we want to take. We need to think about how the enemy will react as well. And if the enemy reaction is very easy to do then you, you, you can't do that kind of angle. So let's say you play Zen and Tracer over here, right? And then your Tracer moves, 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 shoots, and then you're like, okay, you know what? I'm just going to do blinking. And Zen is over here. The enemy team, Yaki, after fighting, and he sees the Tracer go through, he can just go straight for the Zen. So if you want to play this style where you want uh, you want Shex to take a wider back angle, right? So instead of doing this, you want Shex to go do this, right? Behind the enemy team. I don't think Zen can even be here. Like Zen could play here, but he has to rotate extremely quickly. Or probably best you just don't even rotate with the Tracer at all. Because it's dangerous. It's only not dangerous here because you have one Zen over here and you have a Tracer over here, right? A Tracer over here. So it's not dangerous because the Tracer kind of protects this Zen by fighting over in this corridor. But once you have a Tracer like move past this area and place over here, then this Zen can no longer play over here and it will die. Maybe not in ranked games, but in, in, in Overwatch League, they will be able to notice like you're just out of position by like 5 meters or you or the Tracer is in like 5 meters too forward and they will just go for the Zen. So, uh, and there's more advanced theory as well. That even if the Tracer tries to peel from here, uh, he will have to use more blinks to travel back than the enemy Tracers. But we, are, we won't talk about that. But essentially, it makes it very hard for the Zen to stay there. So if you want to play there, it's just hard. Also, not to mention that if Shex plays over there, right? If Shex plays over there, there's nothing stopping, it's hard for Shex to get heals. Uh, yeah, it's hard for Shex to get heals. If the Zen doesn't play here and Shex plays here, it's hard for Shex to get heals. That's why you don't see many people actually flanking all the way over here. Because you're isolated from your own heals. Most of the time for the attacking team, uh, you want to flank, but your angles of flank must still put yourself in a position that you can still get resources from the team, right? So the supports generally play somewhere like here. So you want to play as the, as the, as the, as the tanks and as the whatever, you want to play somewhere like here. The green color area. Since you know that your support plays somewhere like here, right? Any angle that is past this, like for example, if you want to flank over here, over here, right? You will not get support from raid anymore. So if this is the attacking team, you will not get support from the you will not get heals from the support anymore. You could still do that. There's some teams that does that. For example, uh, you know Boston Uprising. Boston Uprising. There's this player called uh, Jerry, right? And that guy always does this kind of thing. It's fucking annoying. <laughs> he always plays in a position that he can never get heals. It's kind of like all in. If you catch Jerry, he's fucking dead. You know, Jerry's fucking dead. But because he keeps doing it in, in, in screams and he, get, he gets away with it. This is also why Jerry looks like he's carrying the game, the, the fucking game, because uh, he always does this and then he does it in like smart occasions. But I think he, he's one of the players that I think he does these kind of things the most. Where he plays in a position that is an all in. In poker, it's an all in, right? It's actually, you, you get caught, you die. There is no, I will try to escape. There's no, Zen, help me out. No, no, no one can help you. You flank like that, no one can help you. And he has his strength and his weaknesses. The strength is that 
it is the best goddamn angle you ever have in this game. Because if you flank from the back, you are essentially looking at the enemy's back, right? Like, you're not even, this is not even an off angle. It's a 180 degrees angle, so it's the most powerful angle in the game. But to get there is hard. To get there without people knowing is harder. And to get there without people knowing and then still being able to survive is the hardest. That's why it's rarely used. And that's also why, do you guys remember Pine? I think Pine actually did that once. I don't know where I can find it. Pine hasn't been playing for NY itself for a long time, right? But um, there was one occasion, Pine versus... Is this Spitfire? Yeah, this one. You guys remember this one? He did this fucking ridiculous angle and generally it's not even like... It's not even good. It's not even strategically good because he can get caught. But I did this. So, Speedfire is like, you can see, right? Uh, and, oh, sorry, and White Cell is not. Wait, yeah, yeah, yeah. And London Speedfire versus and White Cell. And White Cell is like defending this way. Spine went all the way behind the enemy. Not even a fucking off angle. He went all the way 180 behind the en enemy. First year of Overwatch. Like, and he went all the way behind it. You know how dangerous this is? If the, if he missed on the Genji, he's dead. Yeah, the, the only way, I mean, he did a lot. And this is this is historical. Yeah, he, he went behind. That's the reason why he got so many kills. The, the, his team did nothing, right? Absolutely nothing. It was just uh, fucking. Uh, that was just fucking pine, actually. So, yeah, that that's the kind of off angle that Jerry takes. He only lived because of his aim. Yeah, I mean, only lived because of his aim. Jerry plays like he's in solo queue by no Overwatch League. No, that's true. That, that is true. Ah. Have shacks go go gone up the stairs to avoid the choke will be too slow, even by this because he can be scouted too. Yeah. He could also go all the way around to play in the mini room to prevent any retreat. Yeah. If Shaxx leaves Valiant should win out of angles and map control, right? So why Mayhem don't split to contest Valiant from surrounding them? Uh, because because Valiant split is not strong. Right? Valiant split is not strong. If it, it's not just about splitting, like I said, it's about the qualities of the split. If the split uh, is not strong enough, they essentially won't win. Let's take a look, right? Can this Tracer get a good angle? No, not really. I mean, it, it's a choke. I just explained, it's a choke. Can the Zen shoot at the enemy? No. The, Z the Zen main job here is just to pocket the Tracer. He can't, he can't actually do anything. How about the Sigma? Can the Sigma see stuff? No, he can't see anything either. Look at that, right? He can't see anything. If he was like over, let's say here, this angle will be perfect for the Sigma, right? He will be able to see everything and shoot a lot of things. But from this angle, he can't see shit. And from this angle, I just explained why Orisa has problem uh, maintaining this angle, right? Because Fate has two shields. And the Orisa and the Orisa and Sigma is playing together for this angle, while the enemy only has one Orisa and one Baptiste playing from this angle. So even though it's true that if you look from the, uh, you know, if you, if you look at this like very, very uh, non-critically, we're just like looking from top down, like, Oh wow, you know, Mayhem is getting wrapped, they're losing a lot of space, right? Valiant has a lot of angles, as long as they, met, they get to maintain this angle, they get to win. Not really, because the angles that they all take isn't that, like, isn't that powerful. Like, even if you look at KSP angle, right? Look at this, look at how hard it is to snipe someone, right? If KSP had this angle, it would have been a different story. So if KSP has this angle, I mean, I'm, I know he can't hold this angle, but let's say if KSP is holding, I, I mean, I gave a lot of examples on where the Sigma can hold, right? So if KSP is holding here, Sigma is holding here, and then the rest of the team is holding here, okay. Yeah, Valiant will definitely lose, right? Aside, Mayhem has to match. He has no choice but to split and match these flanks. But the fact that Valiant angles are not great, right? Not great is why they're having some difficulty. So does Valiant actually win this map and or did they get a full hold? They actually won this map. But it will take them many attempts to find a way to break and create an angle. And we will talk about this later. Because I did talk about one thing. I, I just now went yesterday when I talked again about gladiators, I said there was one thing, right? I I talked about how splitting is bad with terrain, but I did also say one thing. There are certain enemies ultimate that can allow you to uh to, to even if the split is bad. Using those ultimates can make the split good, or it can change the nature of that off angle. So we will look at how Valiant break into and win this fight. And they did it with ultimates, but we will take a look at that later. So, one of the most common mistakes, right, from Overwatch League teams, right, not just even, not, not just open division contenders, but they make those mistakes too, is uh, in, in this, three, this three thing, these three main things. I see that in, in my own teams, I see them in like, other teams as well. One, setting up in subpar positions relative to the terrain. Two, using hot 
off cooldowns or poorly. A lot of teams like to see, they're like, oh wow, there are six people together, let's pull them, and you pull them, and essentially it's, it's, it's useless because the enemy like has good terrain or some shit. In, in fact, if you if you pull, right, if you waste pull just by trading off like Sigma uh, shield, it's actually generally not worth it. So Fate has been getting quality pulls, right? A lot of times, I can even go into each and every single one of the pool, and Mayhem will have like, what, 60-70% successful pool, and then another team that's not as strong will have like, 20% successful pool. So successful pool essentially is a pool that forces the enemy to use many many cooldowns or you does a lot of damage. And I know it's a little bit arbitrary, but generally you you know a good pool when you see. It. <laughs> and then of course the last one, using fortify to compensate for poor shell usage. A lot of occasions where you you know your your position is already not great and your your shell is already not great because of whatever. Let's say let's say your position is shit. Your position is shit and hence you're losing the shell war. And because you lose shell war, you have to use fortify. So each mistake amplifies the other mistakes if you notice, for, for double shield. Because each cooldown requires another cooldown to make a push and sustain a push. So if you lose in shield wall, your Zen has less of an angle. Your Zen has to do less damage. If you lose in the in, in, in the cooldown wall, the enemy will always have more, more cooldown than you. You can't sustain a push either. So each mistake amplifies uh, uh, another portion of the fight because every single character has a specific way they can need to hold or stand for them to get like for them to get do things, right? For them to do stuff, essentially, and essentially, it, it, that's why a double show. It's it's when when you fight against a team that's very good at double show, and you're not good at double show, and the difference is like there, you get full health, or you can't complete the map, and you can only complete half of the map. If you play dive and you're not a great dive team, and the other team is a great dive team, you might you you might not get full health, right? It's it's harder to full hold against dive, but in double show it, it happens because it just means that you can't storm the castle, right? I, I gave the castle analogy at the start where double show defense is essentially a castle. It just means that if you if you if you can't if you can't find out exactly how to play it and you don't, you know, you know, the difference is big enough for double show, you will just essentially not be able to break into the castle. Yeah. Thanks for the follow, Kalo Vask. God, I miss pine lightning in the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of a key and pew sketch. Pine played so aggro, but it's fine cause good aim. Yeah, but yeah. Do you think that Valiant is being carried by the DPS? No, I, I don't think so. Valiant is good, generally, by everyone. Everyone's pretty good. Uh, their DPS is definitely a, a shining star, I would say. But uh, most of the DPS are pretty good. How is Fortify used then? Uh, Fortify can be used for uh, generally to save your own life or to, to push. But uh, I, I guess it's different. It's, it's very hard to say like what's a good 45 and what's a bad 45 unless we look at each 45. We'll, we'll try to find examples of it, Emre. We'll try to find examples of uh, that. It's just that if you sometimes if you use 45 to save your life like once out of like, one minute, that's fine. Because sometimes the enemy will break through your shield and sometimes you will need to use it against like an ultimate or stuff. But if you have to use 45 off cooldowns because you are taking too much damage and you need to, to stay alive and you're using like, the moment you have 45, you use it. The moment you have 45, you use it. Essentially, that means something is wrong somewhere. Because you shouldn't be taking that much damage that you, you need to use 45 like off cooldown and if you don't use it, you die, that kind of thing. Use it once or twice and the enemy makes a push or use like a lot of cooldowns or use ultimates and then you use it. Or you use it to make a push yourself, that's fine. You know, use it a couple of times, is fine. But definitely not to next. Because even Fate, Fate, Fate did it, right? You can see Fate actually had to use 45 uh, like after the shield breaks here. Right? They're trying to push the Sigma right here. Right? And yeah, he has to fortify here, right? Because the enemy Widow shot him. Uh, the enemy Widow shot him, so he has to fortify here. Is that a fair, bad fortify? No, not really, because they're, win they're still winning the fight, right? Just because the Widow shot him and he, he needed to use fortify to survive doesn't mean that it's, it's a bad fortify per se. Because that, it, because he didn't need to use fortify in any of the, like in any of the, the, the one minute before this. That's like one of the first few times he used fortify to save his life. So that's fine, because it means that he didn't even need to use fortify and he can still win. And of course, he doesn't need to use fortify for any other purpose, because Mayhem is playing slow, right? So we don't need to talk about how good they use fortify to push an enemy team, because they are playing slow. So in fact, if they don't use fortify at all, it tells you that they are winning very easily, <laughs> because they don't need to use fortify. So yeah, Finn is doing well. Fortify to push. Mayhem is not trying to push, right? For more, Mayhem is just trying to hold an, a, a very, very powerful angle. So, so they don't really need to use fortify. Okay, where were we? So we talked. We we talked about so much, right? We talked about how Yaki is fucking up everyone up and, and blah 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 blah. And we talked about how you know Mayhem angle is making it really really hard for 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 Valiant to push. So how does Valiant even break through this? Well, with ultimates, and we will look at the first ultimate that they, they use. Well, let's look at three things. We look at uh, one, uh, positioning from Valiant before they use the ultimate. Then two, we'll look at the ultimates that they use. So remember, we talked about how you need to position before you fight, right? So, okay, so what is Valiant doing now? 
what is this confusing rotational path they're doing? Uh, let's just see, right? So let's let's take a look at what position they're gonna choose to hold. So Vito is gonna mine this area. Zen and Tracer is gonna do the O one two. Uh, Orisa, Sigma, and Baptiste is actually gonna go from high ground. Vito is actually gonna go from high ground as well. So this becomes like a four two split. So the Orisa is here. The Sigma is over here. So we do see ah. So now the Mayhem has to match. So instead of just playing over here and shooting the payload, there is no one on the payload anymore, right? So Mayhem has no choice. There are, there's more pressure coming from high ground. Sigma is no longer just holding over here, right? Sigma is actually playing all the way over here. He's playing over here. He's trying to move around. He's trying to move around, right? You see, he's, Sigma is trying to hold a more powerful angle. You see, he's trying, he's trying to move slowly but surely. So if he move, why didn't Sigma hold over here just now? Why couldn't Sigma hold over here? He couldn't because there was no Orisa accompanying him. Right, so if he tries to do that alone, like if he tries to move over here alone, he can die. Right, the, the fact that he can play here means the enemy Orisa can pull him off, the Sigma can shoot him, blah blah blah. So he did definitely need more pressure from the high ground to allow him to take this angle. So this is the start of the end. Uh, Valiant has found out, right, that, that you know, remember we talked about how uh, ang off angles has to have quality, right? There's a difference between like a shitty cheesecake and a really nice cheesecake. Similarly, even caviar and, and wine has, you know, has different qualities. You could drink like $5 box wine, but you know, it, it tastes like shit. Or you could buy like a fucking, like, I don't know, like a $5,000 wine. And I, I don't know anything about wine, but there's always something that has like, you know, that are similar in nature, but one is really, really good and one is not good. I mean, I'm not talking about the price or anything, just that, that quality, right? Quality is a big uh, big deal. Handphones are different. One, a smartphone might be, you know, might might one. You you might prefer Android over Apple, even though both of them, technically, are smartphones. So okay, that's a really bad analogy. I don't know why I say that. But anyway. Anyway, the difference between Valiant current play and the previous play they do is that now they have like more viable threat, right? All these off angles are way more powerful. You have an Orisa that you know it gets to help the Sigma out a little bit and more scary. Uh, you have the Sigma holding a much, much more powerful angle, much, right? This is on, a, on an insanely more powerful angle, right? And of course, holding this angle will also make it more dangerous for the enemy Tracer as well, because for this Tracer, there's a Sigma right there. So if he tries to blink back, he, he might get hit. So if he goes down to 1 HP and blink back, he, he dies. So there's a lot of differences in this position that, that uh, as compared to the previous one. So, yeah. So this is great play from Valiant, and this is why also I think Valiant is also like way bet like better than Gladiators and better than other teams in playing this kind of playstyle. Because they identify and they change up their playstyle accordingly. They don't just go, you know, my coach tells me that I need an Orisa on point, my Sigma needs to flank, and my Tracer Zen needs to flank this way. No, they, they, they change it up. I don't think this is a set play from their coaches. I think what happens, my guess is that, you know, McGravy wants to hold the top angle, and it's going to get some help from the Orisa, and that's it. And, and then they help the Sigma hold the angle. So this is great play from Valiant, and it's, like I said, the start of the end for Mayhem. They don't win this fight. Valiant doesn't win this fight, but for the first time, they will get a kill. So we'll take, we'll take a look. Alright. Got in late, how much did I miss? Not that much. You notice how bad the wine tastes if you're hammered enough. <laughs> you can imagine double show by imagining two shows. The good old my freak strats. All right. Okay. So where were we? So we we talk about how Sigma has a much much more powerful angle. So what's the next thing Valiant wants to do? Right? Now we know that Valiant angle currently is way way better than what they were doing previously. What does Valiant want to do now? Well, they, now that they have this angle, they can do the next step of the plan, which is to use ultimates, which is to make a, a aggressive a push, right? So where's Baptiste? Let's go take a look at Baptiste. Let's take a look at these guys. Anyway, okay, they're gonna drop, right? They're gonna drop, but. What done is done in, 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 in the case that Sigma already has this angle. So the difference between currently and previously is that now Sigma has a, a good angle, a better angle, and, 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 Orisa and Baptiste has window. Just now Baptiste doesn't have window, so there's no way they could, they could break the show. But with this window, Orisa becomes much more of a threat against the show. Uh, I, I, of course, you know, we have, we have to say how, like, how crazy Yaki played, because Yaki actually kind of fucked them over. So, I mean, sometimes mechanics is... I can't even see my fucking... Oh, there we go. Sometimes mechanics is can win you games, even if the enemy has like a better angle. So we can see Yaki, because this this is not even like an insane. Play. It, it, it's not even like a strategically insane play. It's just 
it's just Yaki outfragging the enemy. So you can shoot, both get heals, shoots the Sigma, but harder to force away the Sigma, and bow. Bye bye. So, as easy as that. Force the recall as well, both has no recall. But the Tracer becomes less of a threat because no Zen. And, uh, yeah. So, if we go back to this area, after Baptiste outs, right? After Baptiste outs, they have one viable angle, right? And they can break the show really quickly. The next step, of course, is to continue to maintain this angle. I mean, they don't have a Zen, which is... If they have a Zen here, I would say that they definitely would have won. Because essentially, they would just shoot, shoot, shoot. And then the Zen trans in and then they kill everyone. They trans in after the lamb. So now they have a lamb right here, right? They have no more lamb, just trans in after and just kill everyone. Especially if Gundam Jin doesn't have his trans yet. But, uh, yeah. Uh, to counter this play from the Valiant, so Valiant is currently doing two plays. They are doing a window while maintaining three angles. So what they are doing is this. Valiant is doing window from here, right? Window. Wait, actually, let's use a bigger, bigger. Maybe let's use green color. Window here, window out with two people, two two people with window. Sigma over here and the tracer over here. So they have three angles, plus the usage of an ultimate to sustain that angle and make that make this off this splitting thing a more a bigger threat. So how do you counter that? Well, the only way to counter ultimate's uh, push with a great position is to one break that position with your own ultimate or to or to at least stabilize with your own ultimate so they need to break the position but before they break the position they need to stabilize right so bqb here is going to okay the first out that they're going to do is bob yeah so bob is essentially going to try uh to make sure that the baptist and orisa can't stay here right their main uh the way the the way this bob is over is to make sure this orisa and baptist can't stay here uh, and Normally you can kill a Bob really quickly in double shell, but a Bob only dies quickly if you have a Zen near you. And where's the Zen? The Zen is dead. It's over here. So essentially it won't die. If the Zen was, let's say, over here, right? Let's say the Zen was over here and not flanking over here. What uh, Valen would probably do is just to shoot the Bob and kill the kill the Bob. But they don't have a Zen, they don't have Discord, they don't have Anna, so very hard to kill this Bob. This Bob is, you know, for, for all intent and purpose, a pretty, it's, a, it's an insane Bob. So the second thing after you bop, right, that the enemy is like, you know, they, they need to stay, like, they need to fortify, they need to turn around, you see, Orisa can no longer just look in front and shoot them, he needs to turn around, he needs to like fall back, and needs to get heals and blah blah blah, right. So as they fall away, this angle weakens, this angle from, 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 uh, Valiant weakens, weakens because of the bop. And once the angle is weakened, now, now they use the second out to win the fight. So this is the, 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 the out to win the fight, or at least the, the, Bapt the Baptist window is, to win the fight essentially. I don't think it was actually a that good a window. Because to me the window and the the window and the bob does the same thing. But you know what, whatever man. That, that, that was probably like one one of Mayhem's mistake. Probably just didn't need to window. <clears throat> but yeah, but I, I, I don't want to need pick. It's, it's it's okay. And of course the next thing they're gonna do is Macri is gonna hit them in the air. Because if he, want, he wants to sustain this push. Then they have a good angle, they want to sustain this angle, they want to win and they want to yeah. And now, finally, you see one thing. You can see Mayhem splitting. So some of you guys ask, why didn't Mayhem split just now, right? Like, why didn't Mayhem split when, when, when Valiant split? You know, you, you need to... When a team splits, you need to split to match the angle. If a Tracer flanks, you need to send a Lucio to match the, uh, the, the, the Tracer. You need to send a Brigitte to match the Tracer, blah, 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 blah. But Mayhem never needed to split because Valiant essentially didn't have strong enough angles. You know what I mean? Like, Valiant needs to be powerful and threatening, right? It's very strong uh, entity. Uh, and then Mayhem feels threatened. And then, Gargoy, I need you to match X. I need you to match this enemy coming to us from, from the 12 o'clock angle. Then they need to match. But they never needed to do that because Valiant angle just wasn't good enough. But finally, right, the angle is, 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 if the angle is good enough, they will need to split. They will need to maintain a position. Uh, the people that generally will split will be people like Gargoy, uh, probably Bab and Zen, that sort of shit. Yeah, they will, someone has to push the someone has to push the Sigma. Yeah, they need to push the Sigma. They need to push the Sigma. Push the Sigma. Push the, yeah, there we go. So Gargoy is going to push out to go for the Sigma. Otherwise, the Sigma dies to the Zen, right? So yeah, and he has to match the main angle as well, and then they have to push. So a little bit more of a split, and and then of course, Gundam Jin is going to trans in just to make sure. I I think I think they were worried. I don't think Gundam Jin needed to trans to be honest, but uh. So Mayhem did, okay, I guess they lost BQB and Chris. So, yeah, actually the trance is fine. Because they can win the fight, they definitely can win the fight. And I know Mayhem wants to hold this angle. Because to Mayhem, right, the way that they're holding currently is way better than any other angles. Remember we talked about how this choke is really good for the enemy? Yeah, but not quite, not quite for Valiant, uh, not quite for this matchup. 
So Mayhem best chance is probably holding over here. Once the the the, the payload moves over here, right? Probably harder for Mayhem. Not for Mayhem's playstyle, they want to like hold angles, and essentially if you have a payload over here against a really good uh, double shield team, you will almost never be able to push past. Uh, you almost never be able to defend because let's say the Orisa defends here, right? And the enemy uses a window or bongo. This Orisa has to fortify and he has to get out. And someone has to touch the payload, it will be the Sigma. But no matter who touches, it's very easy to kill whoever that touches. So when it comes to double shield, right, the amount of damage is so high that this choke is wide enough that the defending team actually can't like protect it as well, I guess. So I think Mayhem generally uh, they want to make sure they want to win this fight as much as possible so that they can hold this as long as possible. They, they actually don't want to take a second fight over here. And also it's also 1 minute 40 seconds. So even if they lose this fight right here and they take the fight over here, uh, it's not over time. Mayhem wants to burn as much time as possible. So I, I think this Gundam Jin trance is debatable, but I think it is good. I think it's probably the best play to make sure that they win out this fight. So I think it's fine. The only problem now is Valen has three outs, right? They have a uh, Trans, uh, Bongo, and uh, and and Pulse Bomb, and Valen has nothing. They don't have anything. They they only have like Gravity Flux, and it's not enough. The problem about Gravity Flux is that if you Gravity Flux and the enemy has Window or Bongo, so if the enemy has one of these ultimates, the two most powerful ultimates to push is these two ultimates. And if you bon if you Gravity Flux and you ha enemy has one of these outs, you can die. You can die because your shield will break because you're in the middle of the air. Yeah, you're getting discarded, you're like, whoop, and you're getting discarded, right? You'll just shoot you and you'll die. So that's the that's the danger of okay, using Gravity Flux when the enemy has one of these outs. And uh, I mean, and the enemy has to trance as well. So they could trance and use Bongo, and not only will they survive your, your Gravity Flux, they will also kill you. So that, that is a, a big problem. Mayhem also has his, uh, Mayhem also has their, their Bongo. So probably what Mayhem wants to do is they want to use like maybe two outs at once. They want to open with Bongo hopefully tries to force the trans with the bongo and then use sigma i mean that, that that's probably not gonna happen because valen is better it's good valen is a good team so definitely i don't think it's gonna be that easy to force a valiant to uh to force valiant to use their, their their trans without using at least a gravity flux bongo is essentially not enough to force that out force lastro to use trans but and also shex has his pulse bomb so shex can has two choices he could pulse bomb the zen or pulse bomb anyone and force the enemy team to use their lamp, their invincibility lamp. To win a fight, you need to force the enemy to use a lamp. If you, if the enemy gets to hold on to lamp for as long as possible, it's like fighting a Genji one v one. You need to force the Genji to use, uh, uh, deflect, right? If you, if you have very good aim and you fight Genji in the first one two seconds, you hit him with a shot. He's forced to deflect and swift strike away. If you miss all your shots and he doesn't need to use deflect, he doesn't need to use swift strike. That's when you know you're fucked because you didn't even need to. You couldn't even force him to use cooldowns, just like a tracer. If you lose HP without the Tracer using Recall and Blinks, you're dead. If he has like two Recalls and w he has one Recall and two Blinks, and you're like half HP, you're fucked. There's no way. You need to do in You need to be a viable threat, right? The viable threat being the most important term. A viable threat so that right the enemy is forced to use Recall and Blinks and what what have you so that they can they, they yeah so that yeah, they're less dangerous. So Shax is going to try to just he can he can pass bomb anyone. And pulse bombing anyone will force the invincibility drone. He could also pulse bomb the bongo, which I think he will he will do. So we can I think that's probably what's gonna happen, right? Valiant's gonna bongo. Shex is gonna pulse bomb something to force the drone or the bongo. And then oh here's the dreamer, here's the dreamer bongo, right? Dreamer's gonna wait. Just the dreamer bongo and they're gonna try to make a push, right? And you can see this push right now, they are no longer gonna flank. But the reason why they don't no longer need to flank is because they have ultimates. So the Sigma and the Orisa and the Baptist and the Zen and the Zen. So now the Zen is over here. What does it mean if the Zen is over here? It means that the shield is going to break extremely fast. So now they have a viable threat in main. Right, and of course the Tracer is playing on, on the high ground to take a 180 degree angle like this. Right, see. So what's going to happen is Fate is going to... Uh, yeah, so you can see Shex is playing like, like the 180 degree angle. And here's the pool. Uh, and Valen does this really, really well. When it comes to aggressive combos like pool and Pulse Bomb, they play it really well. So that's the pool and that's the Pulse Bomb. And it will blow up two things. It will blow up the lamp and it will blow up the Bongo. So one out they traded for... Uh, one one Pulse Bomb they traded for Bongo and an important cooldown in, uh, in, 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 in lamp. So very powerful play from Shex right here. Uh, great play from Shex. And this is going to free up Valen to do... You know, to to to, to win with uh to win with uh, Bongo. So with Bongo, they're gonna force the enemy team to take a very bad angle. And this is of course, 
now, now you can say that Valiant is wrapping, right? Now Valiant, now Mayhem finally dies. So the difference between the current, uh, the way that Mayhem is moving back and the previous two, three fights that Mayhem moved back is that there was never a viable threat, but now they can move back. And of course, uh, Valiant is a, a team that concentrate on tempo. If you look at Valiant's, if you look at every single one of Valiant's players, and look at how many deaths they have, how many damage they have, you will notice that they, all of them have one of the highest deaths in the Overwatch League. You, can, you guys can go check, not lying to you guys. Lastro has the highest death as well in the Overwatch League, but he also has the highest damage and the highest heals. So the way Valiant play is they play by tempo. They don't like to just say, I want to counter this with this, I want to counter this with this. They try to fight first, they try to have good position, and once they have tempo, they use their ultimate. So they're going to trance and they're going to rush the enemy team, right? It doesn't matter if the enemy team has gravitic flux. If you, get, if you can get tempo, it's hard for the enemy uh, Sigma to even use their ultimate because he's he's so focused on running and not dying that he cannot use his gravitic flux. So that's how important tempo is, right? We can take a look at Gargoy because I know some of you guys are wondering, what if Gargoy used his ultimate? Then wouldn't trance be wasted? But if you get tempo, if you're all in fast enough and high pressure enough, uh, Gargoy would be so... like Gargoy essentially cannot gravitic flux without dying. So we can take a look at this. But you can see why he didn't want to gravity flux. So probably if he gravity flux right now, right? If he gravity flux like right here, just as they, he would die because the enemy has bongo, so he would die. So he needs to wait for a better chance to gravity flux. So he's gonna shoot, he's gonna die, and he's moving. He's like, should I gravity flux? No, because the enemy has trance. Should I gravity, gravity flux? Probably the best way to time to gravity flux is right now. Like right now, on the on the Orisa and the Sigma is probably the best time. But I think Gargoy already gave up. Like I think Gargoy is gonna reset already. So if he wanted to gravity flux, that was the best moment. When the enemy was trying to push like from here to into the room, that was his best moment to flux. Okay, that okay. This is not a good flux. This is not a good flux. Uh, I think you should have flux a little bit earlier to be honest. But mm. okay, okay. I, I can't say it's not a good flux. I just thought the other one was better, but doesn't matter. Okay, and hence, and hence, Valiant wins this map. Uh, not mad, but reach this fight. After a, a grand total of 3 minutes and 30 seconds, Valen found a way to break into the castle. Right? He finally found a way to break into the castle. It was... A chunk of lava thrown over the parapet into the castle gate. Going to sleep. Thank you, John, for answering your question. Good night. Make me drink water. I will. Right here. Hakim Ten said in his own stream that his team, Valiant, should have pushed more aggressively into Mayhem after the power hit. I'll push earlier when the power hit. I think he, he should have meant push earlier because he or, they already pushed when the... They pushed before the power hit. Uh, they pushed after the power hit. So if, if for that to be better... We can take a look at it. For, for that to be better, essentially they will need to push as they, they go for the pulse. Let's see. Uh... <sighs> Wait, is it this one? We'll see whether whether Valen can do that better. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. They were too slow. Yeah. They were too slow. They, if if they, they or at least they could be faster. As if once the tracer was or over here, right, and and they were looking for a pulse, the best possible timing is here. I mean, it isn't even that bad. It's like an A minus or B minus or B plus. It's not even like a bad play. Like right here, after he blinks, right? This is Shaq's, this is Shaq's uh, essentially all inning, the enemy team. So right now, uh, the Sigma is already pushing. You can see McGreevy is already pushing. And McGreevy needs to continue like moving this area. And Orisa needs to fortify and start like pushing hard into this. Uh, the reason why Sigma can, can flare out is because it's good for Sigma to get Bongo. Yeah, so it's fine for Sigma to get Bongo. If he plays like that, he can still get Bongo. But Orisa needs to uh, push in and take space. So Orisa, Dreamer needs to essentially fortify. And this is where he fortifies and push. Yeah. So only they only pushed in after the Pulse Bomb hit, you see? The Pulse Bomb hit, and then, you see, the Orisa, the rest are still over here. And then, they push in. No, 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 they're not even pushing. And now they push in. So they could have pushed maybe like two seconds before, when the Pulse Bomb hit. But it's good enough, so I didn't, I didn't nitpick at it. Because uh, there was more mistakes made, that's why I didn't nitpick. Uh, is he saving his flux for guaranteed kills? What do you mean? Who's saving his flux? 
Gargoy? Gargoy can't use his rocks. He would die if he used his rocks. If the enemy bongos in front of him. Where's my fucking bottle cap? Alright, I have a, a bottle of water in my hand. But I can't find a bottle cap, which is one of the most annoying things that can happen. Ugh. Fuck! Oh, there it is. Okay. Ah. All right. Wait, Sakisa, are you, are you there? We have something at what? We have it's twelve p.m. Right? So yeah, I'll I'll, I'll end my stream at like maybe. 11.30 or something. 11.30? Yeah, 11.30. 20 more minutes. Alright. Okay. Alright. Uh, so, both teams are playing well, I think. I like how Mayhem played, to be honest. They, they There's a reason why they, they stopped this point to all the way to 4 minutes. It's, it's really, really well done. Mm, was there a better way? What could Venom have done better? Just cho choose how they flank better, I think. I think Valiant played really well as well. Because they are on attack and they need to create the strategy to break the defense. And they, they fucked up the first one, but then the second one was already the correct position. So that was already really well done. There are teams that would do the same thing again and again. Or do like the wrong push again and again. So that was really good play from from the Valiant, to be to be honest. So even though it, it's 4 minutes, it's like a kind of like an illusion, right? Like they, yeah. So this is going to be hard for Valiant. Uh, this is going to be hard for Mayhem. Uh, you can see Mayhem's trying to do two angles again, right? They're doing the flank where they have a Zen hold this angle so that they can't push the Orisa and then and then yeah, and then you have the Baptiste sustaining the Orisa uh, the Orisa. This is a very popular this is a very popular playstyle or a very popular position. You have the Orisa holding an area because it's hard to push against an Orisa. If you push the Orisa, Orisa has fortify, has pool, has hot, uh, kind of thing. So Orisa generally holds an angle with maybe only the Baptiste and then the rest of the players tries to flank. Uh, so you have the Sigma controlling one angle, you have the Zen controlling an angle, and then you have the Tracer, yeah. So, yeah, I mean... But, yeah, it's still gonna be hard for, for Valen. That's the window! Uh, because all windows here are gonna be useless on the side of Mayhem. Because if Mayhem window... Valen just needs to step, you know, to the side. But if Valen window, if Valen window, Mayhem cannot touch the payload. So there's a little bit of difference here. Yeah, that's why double shield is is different. Uh, if if this was like a Ryan Zaya versus Ryan Zaya uh, matchup, then the defending team can defend this for a very long time. Maybe even f go for the full hole. But for double shield versus double shield, the, the the whole the whole point of having a discord op. And the fact that you have to stay on payload to, to contest the payload becomes extremely painful for whoever is touching the payload because of the Discord op and because of the nature of the poke comp. So even though this is a choke, it's essentially not a good enough choke for defense. Yeah, Valiant choke best chance of full holding was probably over here. At this point in time, yeah, very hard for Mayhem to win. Unless like, B you probably need a bop or something. If you have a bop, right, like BQB, if BQB has a bop, uh, they could try to bop behind and then try to push out and kill them. But if you don't have an, an ultimate that allows you to push past the payload, it is hard to win. Because you must remember that Mayhem has to get a kill, right? Mayhem has to get a kill. They can't just like stall it. Stalling, stalling doesn't allow you to win. They need to get a kill. And they can't get a kill with any of these ultimates if they can't push the enemy team. So they need to actually have some people over here, right? The, the Sigma over here, like what Mayhem is doing. And then they need to have a push. So probably you want the bot to be somewhere over here. The Orisa and the Bat try to push through to window over here. Uh, push up your window so your window is in a more aggressive position and your sigma plays over here and try to flare out as well but they don't have a bob so they only have a window it's essentially not enough i think probably mayhem best play is just wait until they have bob i think but uh maybe bob and window i think mayhem should have just played slow here maybe i think it would have been hard either way because lastro has a trance soon so once they have trance they'll just use it to push that's what valiant does Can do the one on one deals. I'm in Singapore, dude. Essentially, you'll be playing on 250 ping. 
I, I'm not playing any server. Um, unless you guys are bronze, I'm not playing any server. I, 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 don't, I don't think I should be taking the handicap against people that are higher rank than me. Uh, is the tournament this week? The T T I tournament is. Okay. Ugh. I'm bronze, my asshole, you're bronze. <laughs> Ugh. <laughs> okay, actually, you know what? I'm gonna end the stream early, maybe here. I think we talked about a lot of things today, and it's uh, we talked about a lot of fucking things. So, do you guys want these slides? Do you guys want these slides? I don't really need these slides anymore. I can just put show usage. Show usage guy, and anyone that wants to use this slide, you guys are show usage review. Okay, let's see. View docs. Uh, how do I? Okay, I'll put it here. Oh, actually, I could just put it in Discord. Yeah, I'm an idiot. Okay. Uh, I mean, sure, Sakisa, but I, I, I want to go shower and stuff. So, you could start streaming. You can just me drop me a message when you are you are ready to do anything. You can start your stream. I can hold. I can. I, I, I can host you. Sakisa wants to stream interview or something so okay are, are you starting a stream i can host you otherwise i i'm off <clears throat> okay anyway any other final questions but uh yeah i hope this was as fun for you guys as it was for me so i that's why i said rialto is going to take a while to cover because the first point alone, it took four minutes for both teams to uh, to win, and both teams utilize many different methods and strategy in defending and attacking. So this this is like this is what a high level game generally looks like, right? When two top five teams play against each other, or when two teams with very strong play style play against each other, you get to see the clash of the play styles. Uh, when a weaker team fights a stronger team, they generally get stomped because the weaker team just doesn't have a play style. They have like. They just play, you know what I mean? Well, a stronger team has something they want to do, whether it's like playing first, playing second, playing slow, playing angles. So generally, that's why, you know, Krusty said many times that a strong team has a play style or a color. I mean, they, they, I don't know why Korean coaches call it color. My assistant coaches used to call it color as well. C-O-L-O-R, color. But I mean, I call it play style, but it's, the, it's essentially the same thing. I assume like the direct translation from Korean to uh, English is something along the line of colors or something. But yeah, the Korean coaches like to call it color, but it's essentially the same thing as play style. I went from a <laughs> four to five. You do private paid sessions by chance? Nah, I I don't do that. Maybe in the future, but yeah. Okay, thanks for taking the time to make this. Yeah, it takes me a long time, by the way, to to take notes and everything. But I I do like this kind of structured review style. Yeah, it's it's a lot more organized and I guess more interesting and and more conceptual than me just running through the whole map analyzing on the spot but like i said it also gives me t more time to rest in the middle right so monday i will stream like monday wednesday friday and i get to rest on tuesday and thursday in the past i stream every day it, it, it was pretty tiring so okay so let's host sakisa play to learn or watch i believe he wants to do he has he's an educational streamer as well and he wanted to do like some sh short interview that's a general interview i will cut you can watch me on that stream or something later i'll do a short interview and i'll go debate i'm very tired that's also one reason why I wanted to end the stream early because I'm I'm kind of tired. My body's still playing like my body's still working on fucking US time or something. Post play to learn O W. All right, guys. I will see you guys around. Have you